News Talk ZB. Good morning, Brent. Morning, how are we this morning? Sorry, the line is a bit scratchy out here. Uh, where are you, Brent? Uh, I'm in Estale Bayview. Ah, uh, right, in the thick of it, yeah. Yeah, right, right in the thick of it, mate. So how are things there? Uh, they've been pretty horrific since day one. Um, mm. We've had, well, we've had loads of visitors from the local members of the gangs out here much every night scoping the place out and looting. Um, I know that that's the story you guys wanted to leave with at the moment. There's a lot of other... But um, we, along with myself and a whole stack of the neighbours and the fire boys, have set up roadblocks through the night. I've just come off a 5 a.m. one myself. Um, I'm back out on a digger fairly shortly, help the fiends, boys recover bodies and bits and pieces. But it is pretty bad out here to hear that comment from the police. To, um, tell you what, mate, come out, and, come out and do a night shift with us and see how you get on. And um, I challenge Mr Chippy to come out and have a visit as well because uh, if you want to be front line out here, we had... Uh, out of 34 the other night, we uh, took the plates and numbers of every, all, every single one of them, 23 of them were known to the police as gang affiliates. So the message is pretty clear. Don't come out here if you don't live here. Um, people Ooh. are getting very angry and we're getting very... Um, there's been looting left, right and centre out here. They're coming down the railway lines. They're coming down other back roads. We're blocking things. Um, I know that's probably not what the what the media would want to hear because it's not the picture that they want to paint. But uh, come and be at ground zero, mate. It's pretty bad. No, Brent, I can imagine. I mean, this is what I find so hard to reconcile. Not being there, you know, you are living it. This is your experience. Yeah. You and your neighbours are setting up all night shifts to try and keep your community safe, and we are being told by Andrew Costa and Chris Hipkins this morning that everything's fine, the police have what they need, that a lot of it is unsubstantiated rumour? Well, yeah, you know, myself and partner had a break into the pharmacy. She's a pharmacy. She's out there yeah. on the ground now. Yeah. And we got the hand, which was brilliant, and one of our hardware boys were even replaced the lock on the pharmacy, which was bloody good of us. But two days into that, we had people, mob members out here, stepping over people at the petrol station, stepping over people at the drugstore, stepping over people at the pub. Um... Luckily enough, we had one of the local cops who started assembling the rest of us um, to get on with it and protect our community, but it's not enough. Um, it just really isn't. And to say that everything, and I don't know what la-la land that lot are living on, but they certainly got absolutely no idea, nothing. Come out and spend a couple of nights with us, mate, and you'll see how good it is. It isn't. It's bloody horrific. And to, and to hear on the media that everything's OK, we've, we're still missing about 1,400 people up our valley. Yeah. Um, and... You know, I noticed none of that's made the news either, along with the, which we know what that is already. What do you need? We need people. Um, we also need to have stuff. We need immediate medical support. We need to have the local health muppet in Wellington to stop saying to shut down the outlying medical centres that have popped up by volunteers. We need emergency funding for the councils because currently they're on diggers recovering bodies and shit, and the council's not, not even sure if they can pay the bill for the fuel. What, what, what's going on? Um, oh. it's, well, it's especially terrific. when the amount of money that's been raised almost immediately, you know, for people like you, for your community. Yeah. Well, there's... there's, there's well, you know, I haven't managed to listen to the news, been out for hours of the night, but yeah. you standing there was two and a half million. That, that, that's probably gone in the first 15 hours in petrol and diesel alone. Um, because every man in his fighting on the roads because one contractor wants to do this and one contractor wants to do that. You've got a group that says you're not allowed on the roads. We've got people, we've, we've got we've got guys in Auckland who have got bay bridges that'll be able to bridge these rivers yeah. and get on with stuff. And they're tempered by local groups that say, well, you can't, it's a waterway, you can't do this, you can't. So just get on with the damn thing. You know, we, we used to be a country of can do and now we're all, oh, no, we can't because we can't sit on so-and-so's feet. There's people that are trapped up the back of valleys for days and days and days. We had a guy walk in from the Putarino. It's 50 k's away. Yeah. Joke. Yeah. A joke. And to hear that whoever's on the press at the moment, I haven't seen the TV, but I've heard that, that everything's okay. It's Andrew it's, Costa, the police commissioner, saying that well, everything's fine. Andrew should probably stay at his desk and leave it up to people that actually know what they're doing. No, Andrew, but come, actually, come down and actually have a look. Because the thing that gets me is what on earth would anybody be doing going up 
into the Esk Valley unless they were bringing medical supplies, water and fuel. They have no yep. business being there. Exactly. You know, I'm doing the 1 o'clock in the morning to the 5 o'clock in the morning shift. We had 40-odd vehicles up here last night, and they're not locals. You know, we're going to our own hands to give locals not a licence plate registration system thing. We can't block all of the roads off because we're lacking manpower. Um, so, you know, we, we, we need help. Um, and, you know, I know the cops are stretched, but, but we need... We need somebody to declare a state of martial law, even if it's just regional isolated pockets, because this lot, you know, we've been told by the police that we've, you know, take our cleaning implements with us because that that's okay. But these yobbos, you know, there was a group of five last night about four o'clock in the morning coming through. Oh, they're going out to visit the local cemetery. <laughs> Dude, you're not going out to local business. And when they came back in, they were wearing their lovely red gang, gang paraphernalia yeah. and giving us the fingers and telling us to F off. Well, you know, unfortunately, we're a bunch of builders and tradies and construction workers that don't really take nicely to that, and it's just that's just terrific. Um, and seem to hear that the police commissioner says it's all good. Whatever, mate. I don't know which planet you're living on. We'll pass that on, Brent. Feel free to call any time. I know you're so busy out there. I know you're in full recovery mode, and I hope you get what you need very, very shortly. Yeah, yeah, we need help, but we we, we need financial assistance. We need the blockage of the RMA Act to be removed so we can get safety devices up the bridges. We need urgent medical help. We need backup systems on backup systems because we're day, you know, what are we, day seven? And people are really tired and they're worn out. Yeah. You, you, go into, you go into town, it's like nothing's happened. People are having laughs, they've got no idea. No. The, information, the information is not even getting into town because I don't know who's controlling the press, but they love to dumb that down so nobody knows. That isn't, man. It, it's it's bad. So I can hear that. I can hear that, Brent. Thank you very much for taking the time to call News Talk ZB nine twenty three. Uh, Kerry, I'm in rural Hawke's Bay. I have not seen or heard from one civil defence person. Our road is back in, and the scum are cruising around like sharks. My thoughts are that this government wants people out of the rural areas and into town, so the whole freaking rural country can go into pine trees. I can tell you, as one pissed off rural person, that is not going to happen. There is so much politicisation of this tragedy and we won't be forgetting it. As another caller said, during COVID, they were all over the country like a rash. Vigilante groups are rallying.